everybody, I'm here at the hangar. Let's chat. Today I wanted to answer one of my most commonly asked questions, and that is how to become an agricultural pilot. Let's talk about it. The first thing that you're going to need is a commercial pilot certificate. You'll start by obtaining your private pilot certificate, and then work your way through flight training to obtain your commercial. You can do this part 61 or part 141. It doesn't really matter how you get those ratings as long as you have them. An instrument rating is not required, but I would recommend it, especially if you're building time to get to that commercial certificate anyway. The second thing that you're going to need is a second class medical or higher. You can fly agriculturally in the United States with a second class or first class medical, but nothing less. The third thing that you're going to need is a tailwheel endorsement and significant amount of tailwheel time. You can totally disregard this if you're flying a helicopter or flying some type of nose wheel airplane to apply, but most of us fly tailwheel airplanes and we need a tailwheel endorsement. The more tailwheel time that you have, the better, but there is no set minimum number of hours that you need. It's just going to depend on who you're flying for, what type of airplane, and what the insurance requirements look like for that underwriter. The fourth thing that you're going to need is a Part 137 logbook endorsement. To obtain this endorsement, you'll need to do some type of knowledge and skills test with your Part 137 operator that you'll be working for. You should retain this endorsement for your records and they will retain it for their records. This endorsement is going to cover everything on the application side of things, especially while you're flying. The fifth thing that you need is a pesticide license with the appropriate categories for every state in which you're applying. Every state has their own pesticide licensing requirements, so I would suggest by checking with the Department of Ag of the state in which you want to obtain your license, and go from there. If you're working for a specific operator, they can also help you get in contact with the right people to take the right exams. Most states have a series of one to three exams that you'll need to take in order to obtain your pesticide license in all of the appropriate categories. Some states have reciprocity with one another, which is great, but some states do not. So you may have to test in multiple states depending on where you plan on doing your flying. It's important to note that these licenses do expire and they do require recurrent training. So make sure you check with each state that you're licensed in to maintain the appropriate number of continuing education credits to maintain your license. Lastly, and this is not a legal requirement, we're going to need a strong work ethic and a strong sense of integrity. Agricultural flying is a seasonal operation. So we are doing most of our application during the peak of the growing season. It's important to have a strong work ethic to get through those days and to make sure the job gets done right every single time. It's also important to have a strong sense of integrity. This is an industry where things can go wrong super, super fast. If you make a mistake, whether it's mixing, loading, applying, anything, it's really important that you own up to those mistakes and you own up to them quickly. By owning up to any and all mistakes, you and your team can work together to solve any issues that may arise, but it's really important that you're honest and don't try to hide your mistakes. That's everything that you need to become an agricultural pilot. Just a disclaimer, everything I'm talking about applies to the United States. If you're in a different country, I'm sorry, I don't know those regulations, but I do hope this helps. Now that you know how to become an agricultural pilot, the next step is to find an operator who's going to mentor you and put you in your first seat. One of the questions I like to ask people is, where do they want to be in the country? Agriculture looks different in different parts of the United States. Some areas are going to be operating year round, which means you'll be flying year round. Other areas may operate for only four to six weeks. That's their whole flying season and they may have a different job in the off season. Some areas will fly six months out of the year and there's, there's everywhere in between. It's okay if you don't know where you wanna be just yet. You can always fine tune that later. So once you know where you want to work, or maybe you don't know where you want to work, the next step is to find an operator who's going to be willing to mentor you and train you and get you in that first seat. Chances are, if you're from an area where there's a lot of agricultural flying already, you may know some of the local operators and you can go talk to them and get a feel for what it would look like to work for them and if they're hiring this year, or next year, what their business looks like. If you are going to an area where you don't know any operators, that's okay too. You can Google operators in those areas you can go to agaviation.org and use their find an aerial applicator search. On that same website, you can also look at their list of conventions for both the state and the national associations and attend one of those conventions. In my opinion, conventions are one of the best ways to network. You can meet people in person and 
talk to them and get a feel for who they are and how they run their operation. I'll link a few of those searches below and hopefully you can find an operator in your area to talk to. So you'll find an operator, you'll meet them. You might do this several times. So you find an operator that you want to work for and they want you to work for them and they're willing to train you to put you in a seat. Now, some areas will just hire you to load for the summer to build experience and can get you in touch with other operators who can start you in an airplane. Some operators will have the ability to train you in their own airplanes. It really just depends on your journey and what works the best for you. There is really no one set way to do this. I wish there was like a one size fits all option, but there's a thousand different ways you could do this. One thing that people find surprising when getting into ag aviation is the application side. We are aerial applicators by trade. The term being applicators. We do the same job that a tractor does on the ground. We are just using airplanes or helicopters as our vessels and means of application. A common misconception people have is that you can get your commercial license and hop right into an ag plane and you will be the best ag pilot in the world. When in fact that is not true, the application side is actually very complicated, very technological, and does require quite a bit of training. What I'm getting at is that when you go to an operator and they are willing to train you, you'll find that they may ask you to load for one or two seasons on the ground before they put you in an airplane. That's totally normal in this industry and it's really an apprenticeship and it's, it's something to look at like you are learning a different trade to combine with your other trade before you can put them together. It's a lot easier to learn all of the nuances on the ground than it is in the air. And it's a lot safer that way too. So I wouldn't be discouraged when an operator says that they'd like you to load for a season or two before they put you in an airplane. I'd look at this opportunity as an apprenticeship and also an interview on both sides. Your employer is going to get to see how you work, your work ethic, how you handle stress, how you handle pressure, and how you treat equipment. That's a big one. On your end, you're going to see how your employer values their employees and how they take their training seriously and how diligent they are with their maintenance. So this gives you an opportunity that if you're not satisfied and they're not satisfied, that you can go find someone else to work for before you get into that airplane. All that being said, it is most likely expected that you will be required to load on the ground for a season or two before you're put into an airplane. That's okay, and we can talk about everything that you're going to learn on the ground in a separate video, because it's a lot. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about is ag schools. There are some ag schools out there, and I will do this in a separate video as well. If you go all the way back to the very beginning, you need your commercial pilot certificate. It does not matter how you obtain that certificate, whether it's six, part 61 or part 141. As long as you have that certificate, at the end of the day, you're good who are able to fly agriculturally. So I think that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you learned the requirements that you need to become an agricultural pilot and you get started on the path to find a mentor or an operator to help get you started in your first seat. I'll leave some helpful links in the comments below for everybody. And if you have any other questions or have anything else you'd like me to chat about while I'm in the hangar, leave me a message or a comment below and I'm happy to get to them. See ya.